Hey guys, welcome back to the fish room. We're in the garage right now, and today we got a small project that we're gonna do. We um, we have a water chain system in the garage, but we don't have a sink. So today I wanted to make a sink right here on that black and white table to the left of the fridge. And we're gonna do it by using a five gallon bucket. Yes guys, if you have one of these five gallon buckets laying around, you can probably do this yourself for, for nothing right just with stuff you have laying around now the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a hole into this table um, and to do that I'm really just tracing around the bucket just to get a perfect circle um, and really it's it's genius the way this bucket is made right because it has a thicker lip towards the top the lip is actually gonna hold it in place so all you really need to do is cut a hole in. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm using my drill and I'm gonna drill a small hole just to have a starter place so I can use my jigsaw to cut out the circle. Now, if you don't have a jigsaw, you can use a handsaw, but it will take so much longer. Um, but if you do have a jigsaw, it's gonna make it easier and look at this circle. It, it, it doesn't look great. Now, the best thing about this is that you don't have to have a perfect circle. It's okay if it's ugly. And I also cut it a little bit too small so my bucket didn't fit. And this is gonna happen. If you're doing this project at home, I would say um, err on the side of caution, right? Make it smaller so that you can slowly increase the size because if you make it too big and it doesn't fit, right? It's, it's gonna be difficult to make it work then. Um, so I made it a little bit smaller to start with and I slowly carved out a little bit more until it was the perfect size. Now, um, here, here's some close up of <laughs> the jigsaw going at it. Um, but this was the final cut and it fit perfectly. As you can see, that upper lip is what uh, holds the bucket in place. And not only that, but that lip right there also acts as like a frame. It like finishes it, right? You can't see the um, squiggly cuts that I did or the uneven oddball cuts because it's all covered by that lip. So that lip works as a support function and to, to make it look pretty. Um, but it's already starting to come together. Now, the other thing you'll need is some hose. You can use a hose, you can use tubing, you can use PVC pipe. Um, there's lots of different things you can use. Now, I had this laying around, so instead of going out and buying some PVC plumbing pipe, I'm just gonna use this hose here. Um, now, what I need to do, it's gonna mainly work off of gravity and a siphon. And so I wanna make sure I run the hose to my overflow pipe that's in the ground on the right side of that fridge. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting all the hose behind the fridge. Uh, that way uh, it's easier to work with and I can just pull it through and then um, drain it. Now, it was really hard to get behind the fridge and I didn't want to pull out the fridge, right? So what I'm doing instead is I'm taping the hose to this stick. And what it's gonna allow me to do, it's gonna allow me to push the, um, the hose behind the fridge uh, and hopefully get it to the other side without me having to pull out the fridge, right? And I gotta say, it, it worked pretty darn well. Um, I, I saw I saw uh, electricians use this before, and it's just it's just genius, right? And if you look at the other side, it's right there, guys. It's it made it it made it so easy. Um, so now, once you have your hose pulled through, um, you are gonna want to make sure that it is long enough to go to wherever your drain is, right? Um, and now this hose is about 50, 60 feet, and it's it doesn't need to be that long. It really only needs to be about 10 feet or so. Um, but I'm not gonna cut it yet. I want to make sure how much I need, and I wanna make sure that it flows properly first. Um, so once you have the hole for your bucket, and then once you have your hose kinda where it needs to be, next step is to drill a hole in your bucket. Now what I'm doing is I'm drilling three small holes so that I can get my Dremel in to make a perfect hole. Now here I I, I, I didn't hit record whenever I was using the Dremel so you didn't see it. So I'm just showing you what I was doing um, to make this perfect hole, right? So I started off with a drill bit and then I finished it out with 
the Dremel. Now next you're going to need some kind of rubber washer or o-ring just to kind of help make sure there's no leakages and it also helps the hose stay in place too. So what I did is I went to Lowe's and I got uh, a $4 basket of like miscellaneous o-rings and rubber washers and there's a few of them that fit perfect. This is one of them and it fit pretty snug. Um, now that you have all that, the other thing that you'll need is either silicone, Gorilla Glue you can use, maybe there's some plumbing products you can use, uh, but Gorilla Glue is going to work just fine. And the reason being is that the hose is made out of vinyl and Gorilla Glue can stick to vinyl and Gorilla Glue is fish safe. Now the Gorilla Glue doesn't really adhere to the bucket as much. Um, but that's okay because it will adhere to the hose, it will adhere to the washer, and it bubbles up and it makes this like foam wall because um, it raises up a little bit as it dries. Now once you have your glue or silicone or whatever you're using, you can kind of pull down on the hose to kind of force the washer into whatever you're using to secure it. And then I'm just going to weigh it down with this Serayu stone that I have laying around. Um, it, it was the heaviest thing in the fish room that I could find. Um, and several hours later, I think we're ready for a test run. If you look at it, you can see it's starting to foam up, um, which is what Gorilla Glue does. And then if I touch it, it doesn't feel sticky anymore. It's kind of hard. So I think it is ready to water test, right? Um, so my water hookup is right next to this uh, water heater and I have a 50 foot hose that I use for water changes and it's one of the spring style hose. And so the idea is to use this hose whenever I need to wash things out um, because I'm not going to use this bucket for water changes as I already have a system to do that but instead it's going to be used to wash and open stuff and clean sponge filters and all of that. Um, but now is the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works and let's see if this thing leaks. So first, as we're filling up the bucket, you can see down below, here's the hose. Some of the Gorilla Glue did come down off the sides, but that's all right. I did a, a hand, a feel test to see if I feel any water linking and I don't. There's no water coming around. I, I moved my hand everywhere and I didn't feel any water coming through, which is good, right? Um, so far. Now it's time to see, is it actually draining, right? So this is the, this is the moment of truth. So here's the overfill pipe and you can see here's the hose and nothing is coming out. Um, so something's wrong. So we need to figure this out. Um, and as I look at the back right here, I see that the hose is actually pinched. If you look down there, you can see the hose is pinched right there. And right before that pinch is where all the water is just kind of waiting. And so I know I need to pull that thing out. I know I need to get the hose unpinched. And I probably need to bring it all the way down to the ground. Um, just so gravity can kind of do its thing. Now it doesn't have to be flush with the ground. It can go up a little bit because as something siphons, the momentum of the siphon will help pull it up uh, small uphills, right? As long as it's not anything too significant. Um, so as I'm moving this little guy around, you can see it already started to drain a little bit. Um, but I just need to get it all the way down and it's kind of hard to get in there, but we were able to make it work. And you can already see it's kind of focusing on the back of my head, but it's starting to drain. I can see it now. And so I know that was the issue. And um, now is the, the moment of truth again. Let's see if it's draining. And it is, guys. It's working pretty well. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, so if you guys are willing to put in an hour of work and you have these extra supplies laying around, um, go ahead and make yourself a DIY fish room bucket sink. Only took me about an hour. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it, right? Let me know your thoughts. And until next time, guys. See ya.